hey, are you brand new to Canva and you, you've heard about it, you wanna try it out, but when you look at it, you're like, what the heck are all these tabs, all these templates, how does everything work? In today's video, I am gonna go over the basics of Canva, the beginner's guide, if you will. Hey there, I am Kate Danielle, a Canva certified creative, and I can't wait to jump in to Canva with you. I'm gonna share my screen and we're gonna cover all the basics, but before I do, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more Canva videos and business tips. All right, let's get started. If you don't have a Canva account, you can sign up through my affiliate link below. It'll give you a 45 day trial to Canva Pro. Now Canva has a pro version and a free version. The free version is really great to get started with. Um, you can create unlimited graphics with it, but the pro version has some awesome features, which I'll point out a few of them along the way. Oh, and one more thing before we jump in. This video is meant to get you started, so I'm not going to mention every single feature Canva has or, or jump into just every little detail because that can be overwhelming. What I am going to do is show you the basics and show you how you can either create a graphic from a template or from scratch. Also, the team at Canva is always improving Canva and making updates. So something may look slightly different, especially when I show you the Canva homepage in just a second, but pretty much the, the gist and the basics will be the same. Let me know below if you have any questions or trouble finding something that I point out. So once you get your account or if you already have one set up, you're probably gonna stay logged in. And when you go to Canva, you're gonna come to the Canva home screen. And on the home screen, you're probably first gonna notice this big purplish blue box that says, what will you design? We're gonna explore all this in a minute because this is how you actually open up a window to design in. But really quickly, I wanna point out a few things. I typically don't use any of this across the top, but if you did want to explore templates, there is a drop down for that there. Over here on the left side, you can see um, we're here on this recommended for you page, which is this is what is recommended for you and under that is your recent designs. All of these, most of these are pretty self explanatory. This is going to open up all your designs. Um, I guess you can see more recent designs here. Anything that gets shared with you will be here. And then this is an important one, the brand kit on Canva Pro. If you click in here, you can input all your brand colors here. I have a video that shows you how to do that. You can upload logos, you can upload fonts uh, down here. You can set brand fonts. Now in the free version, only thing you can really do in here is input three colors, but that's not really a problem because I can show you or I have content showing you how to get all your brand colors in the free version, which will be in the links below. And that is all we're gonna worry about over here for now. Let's get back to this middle section. There are multiple ways to open up a design. You Once you decide what you wanna create, whether it be an Instagram post, a pin, a Facebook post, anything like that that's kind of a standard size you can search for it you can click create a design and you see there's a whole list here with a search bar so if i wanted to make a pen i start typing it in and um, this is the one i generally use here you can also see we have buttons here so i could click on social media and i see instagram posts facebook posts stories um, all kinds of different pre-sized design spaces for you. So once you decide, so let's say we're gonna make an Instagram post. If I click here, which is typically what I do, it's gonna open up a blank window, but if I click on this uh, magnifying glass, <laughs> I just drew a blank for a second. If I click this magnifying glass, I can actually go ahead and browse Instagram templates. Now, I typically don't do this. Uh, I just, well, one, I'm a template designer, but if you wanted to, you can come in here and browse. 
templates. But I go back and either how I open a design is I go to create a design or I just click create blank. And you can actually still access the templates in this window. As you'll see here, it's the first tab. There's all, all kinds of template categories. You can search for the kind of template you're looking for, etc. So let's continue down this left side here. Under the templates, you have elements. And this is where all the fun, juicy things in Canva are. I love this tab. I use it the most. This is where you're going to find any kind of graphics, uh, photos, videos that used to be split. Photos and elements were two different tabs. Now it's in one um, for the most part. You can add in a dedicated photo tab if you want to. Uh, but right now, just we're going to leave it all together. So if you want to search for something, say I wanted to search for a computer. Well, what kind of computer did I want? Right now it's showing me all photos, graphics, videos, whatever it has for that search. But if I want just photos, I can click that. If I wanted only graphics, I can click that and so on. Now in Canva Pro, you get way more photos and graphics included than in the free version. Under this tab, oh, and one thing I should mention is these can get uh, moved around depending on uh, how you add stuff in. So yours may not be exactly in the same order. Templates is always going to be at top in elements. And I believe these like first four are going to typically be in the same order, but you may not have every single tab here. Under templates, we have uploads. This is where any of your uploaded media will show up unless it's in a folder, which we'll talk about in just a minute. Under that is the text tab. I never go in this tab. I will tell you why in just a little bit. It can be nice if you do have your branding set up, then your headlines, if you click that, it's gonna add in the, if the font you've chosen and then the font size you chose if you set that up in Canva Pro. I typically, I just don't use it. I'm gonna skip over styles because it's likely that is not natively in your uh, tab and I'm gonna actually go ahead and exit out. So under text you probably have likes. Here will be anything that you have liked from the elements tab. So if I'm like, mm, I like this girl but it's not for the project I'm using right now, I can click like the little heart and then it appears here. This next tab is a Canva Pro feature only. It's really great. I use it all the time. This pulls up your designs. So here I have um, a set of pins and say I either want to transform this into an Instagram post or I'm working on a new batch of pins. I can just click and it pops it in and then I can reformat it how I need. And then just to go back, I X that out and I can see the rest of my designs here. Logo is under that, which again, that's a Canva Pro feature, and actually that's not a native tab. Uh, the, next fold, the next tab I wanna talk about is folders. Now, this is a Canva Pro feature only. In Canva, in the free version, you do get um, two folders to organize your graphics in. You're um, out here, back on the home page, but not in this area. This is great because you can actually organize designs you want to use again you can put photos in there so i don't really have any folders in this account because it's a demo account um, but i do have one with two templates which essentially this just looks the same as all your designs but once you design a lot it can be kind of overwhelming to find the specific thing you're looking for so if you organize them in folders they will be here and there's all kinds of fun stuff on this last tab, which is the more tab. And that's where you can add in things like the styles that I skipped over, or if you want photos and there's all kinds of integrations, which I'm not going to get into all these today, but you can check out the rest of my YouTube channel for more Canva tutorials. So now I'm going to go ahead and add in a template so we can start exploring the actual toolbar, which is kind of blank right now, except for maybe if you wanted to set the background color but 
I'm gonna go I'm gonna search for one of my templates I do have some templates here in Canva and um, they're not super easy to find but I, if I type in my name it does bring up one and um, this is a pro one but if I click these three dots I can say see more by that designer and I'm gonna add I'm gonna click and add this one in that's how easy it is to add in a template now that I have added that in I'm gonna hide this toolbar over here and we're going to explore the different things that become available across the editing toolbar on the top here. If I select my background, this background is actually um, a photo. It's a paper texture photo that I've created. So we get some of our photo editing tools here. If I click on edit image, uh, you get a whole panel of things. Uh, one that's super fun to use, it's only Canva Pro, is the background remover, which would basically cut the background out. So if I detach this, let's, let's make a copy here. If I detach this image from its frame, you can click that and it does take a little bit of time to process but once it does it cuts the background out and then you can go back in and erase or restore parts to touch it up i'm going to click cancel come back up here uh moving over you have the crop option which basically allows you to readjust how the picture is within its frame so you can see this image is actually a vertical image so it's um hanging over the top and the bottom and so if this wasn't such a like even background you might want to drag it around or you can resize it and things like that i'm going to click cancel you can also to access the crop just double click in there try to make that a little bigger you can flip an image which i'll show you that in just a second so let's go ahead and click on this image here. As you may have seen, this image is in a, f a frame, a circle frame, which you find on the Elements tab. If you have anything typed in there, X that out. Scroll down a little bit and you can do see all frames. Frames are kind of hard to search for. So I just come in here and scroll, scroll, scroll. They're also, you can't add them. Oh, you can add them to likes. I think that's kind of a new. I need to I need to make use of this because I typically use the same kind over and over and for whatever reason they're super hard to search for so this photo is in a frame you can flip photos horizontally vertically if you need to and now that I've selected something in the middle I can position it so if I wanted it to be dead center I would want it a middle center which I know it is because they're grayed out I'm gonna click this arrow to undo that um, I can move things forward and backwards. So if I wanted to move it to the back, um, you can kind of see it went behind the dots here. And I don't want that, so I'm going to move it forward. So this is um, super useful, but one thing about Canva is things only show up as you need them. So if you notice, when I select this background, that's that image just popped into the background, so I don't have that tool. Moving right along, um, the other tool I want to tell you about today here is this transparency tool. This photo does have the transparency brought down, and I can do this because it's a background. That's what it looks like 100%, but if I bring it down, I can see my background color that I have there. I cannot do the same thing to this frame. If I bring the transparency down it does it to the whole photo and if I try to change the color it changes the whole entire frame that color not that layered look all right now let's look at the text if I select my text here I get the text toolbar here you have your different fonts again with Canva Pro you get so many more fonts than in the free version. You get your font size, your color. If this was a font that I can make bold or italic, those would um, be lit up. 
You can adjust the alignment, which I highly suggest you pay attention to this. When you insert a te text, it typically defaults to the center. So if you're ever trying to line things up and make a list and line things up, make sure you set those that adjustment to the left side. You can do bullets and you, if you toggle through here, it'll be a, the dot or the numbers. I typically don't like this very much. I don't like how it formats. This adjusts the spacing, which is really important. If you have multiple lines of text, you can adjust how uh, far or close the different lines are. You can te uh, adjust how much space is between each letter, which you should never add space in a script font like that. And then this last uh, tab that I want to mention here is effects. This is really fun to play with. I'm not going to go through all of them, but you can come test them out. Uh, they, they add a lot of fun and creativity to your design. And then if this panel is out, a lot of times some tools get hid behind these three dots. So you can see our position tool is down here, which we can make sure that everything's set up how we want it. You can make your font all caps, not all caps, uh, underlined, uh, and those are all that I'm going to mention right now uh, to get you started. Okay, so I know that was a lot of information to kind of throw at you and you might be like, what? Um, can you explain that again? Well, sure. I'm going to add a blank page here. I'm going to, it automatically pulls in your background color. So I'm going to just hit delete to make that white. And I'm going to walk you through how I would design something uh, similar to this. So maybe first I'm going to add in a background. So I'm going to come to elements. Maybe search for a background photo and I'll use this and you can just simply drag and pop it in. Uh, the other way to add photos is if you click and it, let's do one that you can see. If you click, it drops it in and you want to make sure you have your page selected that you want it to drop in on. If you saw it kind of, every time I delete something for some reason, it's a defaulting back to the top page, which is just a weird Canva glitch happening right now. I'm going to change my background. I like something like that better. And I'll, if I wanted to make that a little transparent, I can. And I can set a background color. Let's do maybe this mint color. Then I'm going to X out of that and come add in a frame. You can add things right from here if I want any one of these. Or you can, you know, click see all to bring up all of the frames. So I'm going to use this and this is an outline frame. So I can adjust the color of that outline. I can't change the thickness of it or anything. And as I drag this around, I get some purple guides that help me out. So I already know that it's centered and if I want it dead centered, I can drag and know that it's dead in the dead center. Okay, next I want to add in text. And the way I do that is simply by hitting T on the keyboard. And it pops in text. And often, if you've already used text in a design, it tries to guess what kind of text you're going to use. So it pulled in the text, or the font style that I used up there. So you, you would type your text in. But again, if you wanted to adjust it to something else, you can. You can click in the font menu, uh, the font size menu there to bring up the menu to quickly select a different size, or you can use the plus and minus on either side. I want to add in a second line, so I'm going to hit T again. I make it a little smaller. I'm just leaving the default text in here, but you know, you type in whatever you want it to say. And then we need to add a photo to our frame. So I'm going to come back to up here. I'm going to search for um, a woman. Go to photos. And anyone that I want to use for whatever topic it is, you can just drag it into your frame. Now, if things get moved around, 
say these are kind of all off centered I can click my mouse and this is called rubber band selecting and select all three of those come find my position tool which is hidden so I can either collapse that or click those three dots come to position now if I center these it's not centering it on the page necessarily it's centering them all together but now if I want to quickly center all this on the page without dragging them around I can group them come back to position and it will center the entire group on the page again if you want to center things together select them and they have them not grouped it'll center them together and group and then group them and center it on the page then you can choose whether you leave it grouped or, or ungroup it just by clicking the group button Lastly, if you want to add in anything extra, like I have this, the little splatter dots there, you can come back to elements and um, search for whatever you want to add in. Click over to graphics. Maybe I pick something like that. I can push that on there, change the color. If I want to change it to white, which is one technique I like to use, you can bring down the transparency and it kind of creates this cool effect. And then you can also just duplicate that if I want to use it again by clicking this little uh, plus icon up here. And maybe you want to rotate it around. You can use these little arrows here, click and drag it around to rotate it around. And now you have a brand new graphic. Oh, I saw one thing. I don't want these dots overlapping the photo, so I'm going to select that photo, go to position, and bring the photo to the front and there you go the next step would be to download your design so you're going to click the download button up here uh, it's typically default to what however it thinks you should download it so this is png which is what i would want to keep and um, if i only wanted one page i would come down here and select the page i wanted click done and download and then it downloads right to your computer Okay, I hope that helps clear some things up, get you a little bit of an understanding on how you can work with Canva. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about any of it, any confusion. I'm happy to answer them to make more Canva tutorials to help you out. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe for more Canva tips and tricks like today's video, and I will see you next time. Cheers!